Welcome to The Powers in You with host Leora Leon. Today's special guest is an international singer, songwriter, actor, and all-around fabulous person. Let me present to you Carlton Jamel Smith. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my show, The Powers in You. Today, I have this amazing international, worldwide <laughs> singer. Carl- really? Who's going to be here? <laughs> Smith, and there he is, <laughs> who I have known and loved for many, many years. And uh, Carlton, welcome to my show. I'm glad to be here. I honestly am. Like you, are, you, you radiate nothing but positivity and good energy. And God knows we need that these days, in these trying times, right? So do you. So do you, my love. Thank you. You started, now you're in New York City right now, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Stranded. <laughs> North- you tour all over the world. Yes, yes. I'm supposed to be in uh, Europe now. We're, we're supposed to start the tour again in Germany and go to a bunch of different places and hit the Netherlands as well. But um, as you well know, nobody wants us Americans to come anywhere because we don't know how to behave. We don't know how to we, wear our masks and social distance. And oh Lord, don't get me started. No, get me started. Let's let's get started. <laughs> I get you wound up. Yes. <laughs> You wrote something in your bio that you were raised, born and raised in Spanish Harlem. And, and just yeah. a little bit about you from the beginning, how you got to be where you are today. Uh, well, born and, ra- uh, um, born and raised in Spanish Harlem uh, with my mother and, and my sisters. Uh, my father passed when I was a little boy, so I, I don't have a lot of memories of him. The ones I have are great. And I have, I, I don't know if I tell you this, but I have all of his love letters to my mother. Did I tell you that? Oh, that's a book. All of it, it is. And you got to read this guy's right. This guy was my darling dearest as I lay here looking up at the moon, hoping that it, it's, it's shining down upon your pretty face. How can I help but love you? And I mean, just every letter, and, and because he was traveling a lot. Right. I would tell you something funny. He would always put the date. Even if he wrote her notes around the house, he'd put the date on them. So mm-hmm. I have all this stuff, and I'm reading them, and I'm like, oh, my God. Then I get to one letter, and... Yes, my sweetest, but the, the, your tender embrace and blah, 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 blah. And last night you felt so wonderful and so divine. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't want to read that. <laughs> and then I sort of read through my fan. It wasn't bad. But then I checked the date, and I'm like, that's me. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it was the night I was conceived. So I'm thinking about getting that put on a T-shirt, you know what I mean? But so we're, we're in Spanish Hall. Let me pass this. So we're still there. And uh, it was um, a couple of months after that. I mean, we're sort of moping around the house or whatever. And my mother says, come on, we got to get up and get out and do something. I'm going to take you on someplace. I mean, she taking us other places. You know, Thanksgiving Day Parade, where you see Santa Claus at the end, ready for Christmas, uh, the circus. I'm going to take you someplace special to see James Brown. And literally, my life changed. I, it may, sound, may seem cliched, but that's the God's honest truth. I can tell you the seat I was sitting in. That's how much... I remember that moment, you know? In the Apollo Theater. Oh, yes. I, I know that. I've since gone back there and sat in that very same seat on what, many occasions. What seat was it? It was uh, 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 the, the first balcony, three seats in from the right. Wow. Okay. So, wait, wait, that night we get there, and I'm like, okay, what's this? What's where? All these black people are coming in dressed like kings and queens. I'm like, what is going on? Da, da, the curtains open, the band is standing there like soldiers in the tuxedos. I'm like, and James Brown walks out in a royal blue ruffle shirt, matching royal blue pants, black patent leather loafers with a silver buckle, a diamond ring that sparkled right up to where I was sitting. And I'm just like, okay, whatever this is, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> I kid you not, I was hooked from that moment on. So that's what started uh, this journey I'm still on, <laughs> Mr. Brown. <laughs> oh, that's yes. amazing. I just saw footage that you put on Facebook of one of the Wayne's uh, siblings. Wayans, yes, yes, yes. And wh- what is her name? Daphne Wayans, God bless her. Yeah, and she was in Starbucks. Yeah. She heard your music and she's like, who is that? And I guess her boyfriend's like dancing to it. And You know what, the universe is wonderful because... Uh, I've, I've gotten clips of people hearing my songs at Starbucks for, for over a year and a half now. They've sent from all over the world. They've sent me different clips, and I love it. I've ne- I'd never heard it. That very same morning, I'd gone running, 
and uh, with a young lady from this building, and she went in Starbucks to get some coffee. She ran back out, they're playing your song. I'm like, really? So I went in and listened to it. I'm like, oh my God, that's, and she wanted to just tell everybody in. I'm like, please don't bother them. Tell them it's you, this is him. She's going to preserve. So that was cool. And I'm like, wow, what a, what a cute, sweet experience. Thank you, God. And then I get home and I get that message from this lady, Daphne Wayne, and within an hour of that. So don't let, don't let people please make no mistake. The universe is always working and aligning itself with our best interests. We just have to recognize it and notice that and, and, and be appreciative, you know, be grateful. You know, that's what I love about you, Carlton. And I think um, you're always so uplifting and beautiful. And, and every little video clip I see of you around the world performing were all these different places. You bring the level, the level of entertainment that you bring to the room is like through the roof and everybody loves you. I know you and I connected um, through Kevin right um Kevin. i don't even remember it seems like you i've just known you for a while I, one day i stopped where did i meet leora i don't think i've ever met her right and we hadn't really seen each other until we spoke last week yeah no and we we've talked a couple times and i invited you to come out and stay in los angeles whenever you're gonna get here you can stay at my house and you told me just as long as i have a tv in my room i'm fine that's so right <laughs> that's right but you had uh, cancer, and that's how we really connected, because a long time ago, what kind of cancer did you have? Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Yeah. And how long ago was that? That was uh, 2003, the same year uh, my youngest daughter was born, Misa Love. Misa, yes. That's Misa behind you. Yeah, that's, that's Misa right over here. Yes, that's, that's my heart. I'm going to tell you something. Can I tell you something about that ordeal? Um, everyone that knows me, they know I don't drink, not even beer or wine. I, I don't, I just have never liked the taste of alcohol, right. which is a blessing. I can remember the first time someone gave me a sip of beer. I thought it was disgusting. I spit it out. Right. I've never smoked. I mean, in junior high school, we dabbled with marijuana, but it just made me want to eat. I was never high, you know? <laughs> uh, so I remember the first time someone gave me a cigarette. I inhaled, almost choked it. I thought that was disgusting. Now, by the same token, I remember the first time my mother gave me a, a hot, warm cinnamon sugar donut. And that set of my lifelong uh, uh, infatuation was, I have the sweet tooth. You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. Girls coming to me after a show and trying to be off first. I'm like, my love, unless you got some Pop-Tarts, I'm really not interested. I'm hungry. Okay? <laughs> That's what I want to do right now. I want to eat. But um, so uh, 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 I, I don't smoke, drink. Don't, uh, aside from the junior high school thing, never did drugs. None of them. My thing has always been music clothes and women you know uh uh and anything to access is bad for you but that's been my vices so i go to the doctor this is right before i'm getting ready to go to uh, my first international trip to china and uh he runs the whole test or whatever and he comes back and says okay well you know as always your weight your vitals everything is great everything is wonderful but um i think you've got prostate cancer and i remember being still like like whoa how why why how could that happen you know he says well, look we don't know but that we're going to run some tests. We're going to see. And after they came back and ran the test, uh, I'll never forget his words, but there, there's something there. So then I set about having to do what needed to be done to get that taken care of. But I remember um, just when they were about to, to go through the whole thing, I'm in the bathroom crying my eyes out. I mean, the doctors were knocking on the door. You're going to be okay and whatever. Yeah. And then at one point I said, wait a minute. My youngest sister had uh, breast cancer and wound up passing. She had to have one of her breasts removed. Uh, uh, wanted to pass away from my mother uh, had glaucoma, diabetes. She had to get needles in her eye. How dare you sit here and cry because of this? How dare you cry? Those are two of the bravest women ever. You know, uh, it could have been AIDS, homelessness, crack addiction, all these other things that nobody plans for. So if this is to be my life's crisis. Let me go on and deal with it and accept it. And from that moment on, I've been okay with it. You know what I mean? I went through all the things I had to go through, and that was the whole journey in and of itself. But no, no, I, 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 I felt embarrassed because I caught, I caught sign myself in the mirror. I was just, oh my God, Hollywood crying, you know? Just look at you. Man, I'm looking at what your mother and your sister went through. So man, I'm going to take that. Now, Carlton, you love getting dressed up. I, I love getting dressed up. When I was a kid, I would go to the Apollo Theater every week. Are my ankles and everything still okay? You're good. I'd go to the Apollo Theater every week. And you see entertainers come out on stage dressed in, uh, they just look magnificent. Who would you see there at the Apollo? Oh, Al Green, The Temptations, 
the Shylites, uh, uh, the Spinners, Eddie Kimbick, you, you name it, everybody, for a dollar, for one dollar. And I would come home, I'd write down everything I saw, everything they did, what they wore, what they said, and I still have all these notes in my little 12-year-old handwriting, so they're going to form the basis of a book. We can talk about that later. But uh, my mother would, let me, would give me $2 every Saturday, a dollar for admission and a dollar to buy a bag of donuts. And I was sitting in the front row and just watched the show, the same show three times a day. I got And it was just, I got the greatest in, uh, education in, in, in possible. And these guys just look magnificent. Now, a lot of those very same sneaker stores that are in Harlem on 125th Street, they used to be clothing stores. And that's all the pimps, drug dealers, entertainers, everybody bought their suits and clothes from there. So you would see these things. I'd come outside and see these suits in the window. I'm like, oh my God. And I'd run home like, Ma, Ma, you have to see this suit. The OJ's had it on. And Baba, it's only $50. She's like, Carlton, I'm not sending you to school no red sequin suit. What's wrong with you? I'm not buying that for you. Come on, please. I don't want it red. Can we, can we just get green or maybe the, the white one? Carlton, it's got sequins on it. No. But then every now and then she would break down and buy some of the stuff for me. And um, allow me to share something with you. My yes, dear. please. Okay. <laughs> I actually happen to still have some of the platform shoes that I used to go to school wearing. Now they're beat up because I have to get them restored. But these are black oh. with rhinestones around them. Oh, wow. James Brown and the JBs used to wear these, okay? I, I would go to school with this. Hold on. Oh, my. Oh. Suede and pattern leather. <laughs> you know what? Uh, and the funny, I'm going to send you a picture. I'm gonna, I got a couple of pictures to see. Let me make a note of that. Uh, I, was in the, I was in the hallway one day because I wouldn't really go to school. in the hospital. I would climb around, be hanging out by the girls' gym. And I now know with hindsight that these men were making, we're not making fun of me. You know how they say in England, taking the mickey out of someone, you know. Um, I'm walking in the hallway, walking around, whatever. And these two men, older middle-aged men, smoking cigarettes, cameras around their neck. They saw me, did a double take. And they then look at each other. Hey, kid, you want to take some pictures? Uh, we're taking, taking pictures of kids in, in classrooms with the teachers for textbooks. You want to take a picture with the principal? I'm like, sure. Come on. And I'll never get the principal who didn't like me anyway because I was always in the hallway. She, they said, Miss Blatt, we've got one more kid to uh, bring in. She went, sure, bring him in. Carlton. <laughs> like, hey! So they took the picture. This picture didn't appear in any yearbook. May I tell you what I had on that day? Yes. A black velvet suit with white piping and a sash, a white ruffle shirt, and some black patent leather platform boots, which I still happen to have, okay? This picture, I'm gonna send it to you, please. <laughs> this picture, go, these men went home and laughed with their wives about this picture. Look what this little black kid had on in school today. But that's how I would go to school every day, dressed up in these suits like that. Every now and then my mother would buy some of them for me or get me the less ostentatious uh, outfits. And I'd go to school like this all the time. So I believe in getting dressed up because people pay money to see you. You should look your got best. It. You got you it. Look your, unless you're in the Grateful Dead or something like that. Then it's understandable. But right nowadays, entertainers, I, I tell you, they get on stage. They say they look like they live under a bridge. It's like, yeah. Is, yeah. Did you know you were going to be on TV on stage? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wait. Honey, uh, so you starred in, you were in a couple films. Uh-oh. Right? I want to talk about your, your film career. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about, how many films have you been in? Uh, just two, not a lot, just two, because I didn't really pursue that. Uh, um, although I love writing screenplays and things, I do it all the time. But uh, the most notable ones were Brother to Brother with Anthony Mackey. I played a homophobic subway preacher. Okay. Wailing against what, what he was, and hey, who knows me knows that's the furthest thing from the truth, but right. I did it well. And the other uh, film, do we have a minute? Can I take a little journey to that? Because this is life in the universe doing it again. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lifelong James Brown fanatic, as we've established, right? Um, so I would go to see him, and I met him so many times. Those, those are other stories in and of themselves. But we fast forward to September 9th, 1994. He's going to be appearing at the Apollo. A good friend of mine is working at the Apollo with the lighting. They're setting it up the night before. 
And he says, so I go to see him at about 2 o'clock in the morning. It is now officially September 9th. He says, well, your man's going to be here tonight. I know you're coming in. I'm like, nah, I don't want to go see him. Because by this time, he sort of begun to phone it in. He wasn't the whirling dervish of his early years. And it was just kind of, I said, no, I don't want to ruin the memories. He said, yeah, right. You say that all the time, then you show up at the last minute. And it's true, because I'd be like, well, maybe he'll do a split tonight, and I would still go, you know? I said, no, man, I'm not coming to this show tonight. Man, something will happen tonight that will keep me from coming. I'll, I'll get a date with Beyonce. Halle Berry will call me and say she has to marry me immediately. Something's going to keep me from coming to the show. Um, well, my mother passes away that night, so I'm devastated. He's there from the 9th to the 13th. She passed on the 9th was buried on the 13th. Devastated. Um, so I, I, I go, you know, to the funeral and I deal with it. A couple of years later, it's September 9th. And I'm praying, God bless you, Ma. I hope you're resting in peace, and so on and so forth. And my phone rings. Uh, hello, Carl. Yeah, this is Harry Weinger from Universal. Um, we're doing a movie, and we heard about the way you perform. Is it possible you could play James Brown in a movie? Like, is this, is this, are you serious? Is this a joke? No, we're very serious. We heard about the way you perform, and we figured you could probably do it, because the other guy's exhausted after two takes. I said, sure I could. I'm like, thank you, Ma. You know? So... Uh, he says, look, we need a videotape of you lip syncing these songs by next Monday here in L.A. I said, I'll have it to you by, by next Monday, I promise you. Got off the phone, made a couple of phone calls, went to the studio. I had a tuxedo. I bought a wig. I, as a matter of fact, it was called an Al Sharpton wig. I remember because I went to a costume place. It was an Al Sharpton wig in black. Uh, uh, and I had a bow tie that James Brown gave me once from the stage. I put that on. And my buddy had a little camera, and we filmed me doing a mini concert as James Brown. Then it took a couple of days, so they were calling me every other day. Uh, Carlton, we didn't get the videotape yet. You said you need it by Monday. It will be there Monday. So I did the whole show. We edited the film. Monday morning, I got on a plane and flew to Los Angeles with Gina Fredericks, God bless and keep her. We flew to Los Angeles. I went to hand deliver it. As we pull up in front of the production office in somewhere in Beverly Hills, Get me to get out of the car to get in there. A white van pulls up next to our cab and it's playing a James Brown song. I'm like, what are the odds? I'm like, I'm going to get this. What are the odds? And every time I tried to lean forward to see who was driving, they'd move up a little bit more. They'd move up a little bit more, so I couldn't see. I'm like, okay. I go upstairs in the office. And she says, uh, I said, she says, uh, you are who you here to see? I said, tell Mary Lou Eels, that's her name. Tell, tell her James Brown is here. <laughs> so she comes out of office. She goes, Carlton? I said, yeah. She said, you don't live here. What are you doing here? I said, I really want this role. So I came to bring you the tape. I said, oh, my God, please come sit down in my office. Sit down. I, I, I sort of plop down on the couch, and it knocks over all the CDs in her wall unit, <laughs> except one. And, it was, and she says, oh, my God, look, it was a James Brown CD, Roots of a Revolution with a green cover. I'll never forget it. And it just went from there. So I, I consider it such a blessing with the universe aligning itself because most people never get to even see their idols. I've seen mine, met him countless times, and to get to portray him in a film is, is a blessing. And if you check James Brown's Wikipedia profile, his filmography, I'm listed in there. You know what I'm saying? Film? The, name, oh, the name of the film is Liberty Heights. Liberty Heights, okay. By Barry Levinson. And I'm playing James Brown uh, circa 1954. Uh, Two years before he blew up, but uh, it was an amazing experience. Barry Levinson and his entire uh, crew, everyone he was working with, it just, was just so wonderful to me. They were just so nice. And I remember thinking, no matter what, uh, what other films I will go on to do, I don't know if anyone, if there will ever, it will ever be as, as pleasant an experience. Right. And then, <clears throat> it was wonderful. They, they put this wig on me. And it was just so great to have hair again, Leora. I was just like, it was just, I, was, I was flipping around. <laughs> I was doing the Beatles. Woo, she loves you. Yeah, yeah. I was having a ball with it. Hair. Okay. <laughs> so that's the road to Liberty Heights that I will never have. Oh, so then the following year after it's released, I'm backstage at BB King's and I meet James Brown. I see him all the time when he come through there. I said, Mr. Brown, did, yeah, that movie they did in Baltimore. Man, that thing was out of sight. It was out of sight. The way they went back and forth between me and you, first it was me, then it was you. Then it's me. Then I'm like, oh my God, he thinks that was him. He thought the faraway shots were him and the close-ups were me. So I'm like, 
Yes, Mr. Brown. Yes, they went back and forth between me and ha! I know they did. I know they did. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'll let that go. And you know, and I, I wish I had these things on film, but you, you just don't think to Right. Right. And that's the problem nowadays because we, we're living our lives through these cameras. We're filming everything as opposed to just being in the moment. You know what I'm saying? I, go to any con well, you, concerts aren't the same. They won't be the same. But prior to the pandemic, you go to any concert, the people in the front row VIP seats are standing with the, with the camera in their hand. Or You're in the front row. Yeah. Yes. You know, so anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. Sorry. Different generation. So. Oh, my God. My daughter doesn't has no idea. I'm enjoying talking to you, so I hope I'm not going off too much. <laughs> you're awesome. You know what I I want to talk about? Um, what you're? When do you foresee you going back on tour? Like you don't know or? I have no no real idea. Yeah, it's projected for next year, April sometime. But yeah, I'm supposed to go and I'm supposed to go to Poland in April or May. Yeah, right, right. We I think we talked about that, but there's just no telling. And even when I do go back out there, the one thing I'm going to miss is. After my shows, I, I wouldn't even go change. I would always go stand by the front door, dripping in sweats. So I make sure I had a towel so I could greet people as they were leaving and tell them, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. You get to hug them, kiss them, shake their hands, whatever. And the sad thing is, you know, you can't really do it. I don't think I'll be able to do that anymore. So I'm going to miss that interaction with, uh, with people, you know? I, 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 that's the one thing I love. Uh, just, the, you know, all the, I always say all the linguistic and cultural barriers just get broken down, you know, as you, as you get to meet people. And for a lot of these people, and I'm well aware of this, um, I'm the first black man that, that they've met or spoken to up close and in, and, and in person for a lot of them. And you can tell, and I've had it said to me countless times. And my mother always told me, be mindful of how you, how you are when you go outside. You must represent yourself and you must represent your people. You must always be mindful, well-spoken, intelligent, look good, smell good, speak well, be kind to people. She would drill these things into me every day because you're dark skin and you would not be here. So you got to do 110%. 100% ain't going to be good enough. You got to do 110%. So, uh, and it's funny because, you know, I, I'll, I'll meet people and you can tell they're, this is a shame, but they're sort of blown away by the fact that I'm smiling and speaking in complete sentences. But that's just the, that's, that's a moral reflection of, of the images that are portrayed of us worldwide. One Chinese lady said, I thought you all played basketball and did rap. Right. You know, I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> as, you, as you clearly know. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very mindful of, of, of that and how I represent myself because that's just how it has to be, you know? It has to be. Well, you have represented yourself amazingly. You're a loving, kind soul. and I'm representing her. I'm representing my mother. Yeah, well, I really am. You did an awesome job, Carlton, because I, I've Thank you. you for years and – you know, you're just this really beautiful man, and I, I'm proud to know you. Thank, oh, man. I'm too black to blush, but I'm blushing behind all this. Oh, sweetheart. Okay, tell us where we can see you again and how we can connect with you. Well, uh, again, Facebook, Carlton Jamel Smith, uh, J-U-M-E-L. Instagram, Carlton J. Smith Official. Um, that's the social media way. In terms of my performing, we're not exactly sure when I'll be back on stage. God knows I miss it. I'm going to be trying to set up some sort of uh, Zoom uh, podcast concert, something like that. And all that stuff will be mentioned on my social media. It'll be mentioned. I'll let you know about it as well. But everyone listening to The Powers of You, again, y'all hanging there with Leora Leon because she's just the best, the absolute best. Your spirit is divine. I kid you not. Divine. Hey dear, I love you. And uh, we got to do this again. So we'll you get... Let me know whenever. Call me whenever, okay? Getting ready to do your uh, tour, I want to know. And when you get your Broadway uh, show up and running, uh, the one will be right there with me. You will, you will have the VIP seat because you've spoken into the universe, okay? All right. Love you, Lord, so much, okay? Honey. All right. Thank you <laughs> so much. Bye bye. Come on. This is what love looks like. This is what love looks like. This is what love looks like.